So I got this frame a while back. I paid like 150 bucks for it, and all I had to do was put an engine on it, but it's a pretty nice frame. It's got full suspension in the front. It's got suspension in the back. It's one of the more comfortable go-karts that I have. But the one big issue with it is it's one-wheel drive. So I really can't make a lot of power with it and it actually be functional or useful. But if you got too much torque, it likes to pull the rear end to one side just because it's that one wheel getting power. Or it just won't hook up, it won't get any traction at all, so it's pretty much useless off-road. But, you know, if I back off of the torque and make it, make it more functional, it rides really well, but I don't have any get up and go. It struggles just to start moving, but once it starts moving, it'll get going a little bit. And that's just solely based on the gearing and, that I have to use to make it somewhat functional. But you can't really tell it in a lot of the videos because I edit it out and most of my the stuff I do with it are kind of top speed stuff. But if it starts to bog a little bit, it doesn't have that power to pull through. I actually had to work a bit with the gearing just to get it where I wanted it to where it it had a little bit of top speed, it still had a little bit of torque, but not too much torque to where I was just gonna keep spinning that tire and not go anywhere. So it was really frustrating and I ended up having to make a custom clutch where I used the housing from a completely separate clutch and then the internal components from another one. But what I decided to do is I'm gonna make it live axle. So won't have that problem anymore. I uh, ordered a bunch of parts, got a live axle, some things to hang it with. Uh, most of my go-karts don't have any brakes, so I actually ordered brakes. Hopefully, I'll be able to actually take it off-road now, uh, maybe try to do some trails with it, and it'll actually be functional, and it having a full suspension will actually make sense. I'm gonna show you here what I mean by it doesn't have anything bottom end, it doesn't have any torque, it struggles to get going. Now, that is, you know, people are gonna point out that you can change the gearing, but this is the gearing I had to use to get it to actually function. I, you know, I could go up and reduce the clutch sprocket size. I could increase the size of the axle, or well, it doesn't have axle, but the wheel sprocket, but I've done all that. It just, it just makes it non-functional or it has no top speed, so, this is where we're at right now. So I hit up about every go-kart, you know, known go-kart vendor to get all the parts for, to make this thing live axle. I got a Winnet's axle, I've got four hangers, you know, I was a little worried about just using two hangers since I am going to be trying to take it off-road and maybe do some trails and stuff. So I wanted to have a little extra support and and strength. So I got my hangers, got bearings. I did get, this is from Go Power Sports. This is their brake kit that they sell. I haven't used one before, so it'll be interesting to see how we get that set up. Uh, got this billet sprocket hub. Um, I've used, I've got, I think this will be the third one of these I have, and for the price, these things are great. I mean, it is really nice quality and only 20 some bucks compared to what else you can get for 20 some dollars. And some of the other just, I guess, stamped or cast or whatever they are, have bent in the past. Um, I'm also going to be using some aluminum split sprockets. I'm kind of worried about that. Uh, 
I don't know how durable that's going to be, especially with the amount of power I'm going to try to make with the Predator and the torque converter. It works for my drift go-kart, but my drift go-kart's quite a bit lighter. So we'll just see how that goes. I might have to switch to a steel sprocket, depending on how, how quickly that gets worn out. I'm also going to try to use a 35 chain. Like I've said, all my, or all my other go-karts have are using 35 chain. This one right now does have a 40 chain on it, but I'll just see if the 35 chain holds up. You know, I'm a little skeptical with the weight and the amount of power I'm going to be trying to make, but it's just all trial and error. And I got these wheel hubs to fit the golf cart wheels that I got for free. I got about 10 of them. All the tires are pretty much shot, but can't be free wheels. So these hubs will fit those wheels and they also fit our one inch axle. So I'm start getting this thing apart and kind of start figuring out what I'm going to do. So this is what we're starting with. things on this axle are ridiculous but and I don't even have the uh, disc for the brake on yet but just getting it mocked up I'm gonna go ahead and hang the axle just to make sure everything's in the right spot before I finish welding everything so we've got the axle on just to make sure everything is where it needs to be before I finish welding the brackets but it looks like it's good. Uh, I measured it. It all seems like it's it's square or even. So I'll finish getting it welded on. Go. All right, got the mounts all welded up. I got the little extra pieces that needed to come off off. And my $15 well bit grinder finally gave out after what's it been, 10 years. So, well, it's still going, but I just can't get the wheel off. So, time to get a new one. And it's been a hot, long day. I'm going with a uh, 80 tooth 
sprocket. I was going to go a little bigger, but it turns out that once you go over 80, the price goes up quite a bit. Uh, you can get, you know, anything below 80 is about 18 bucks shipped for these sprockets, but once you go over 80, it goes up to about 30, and I didn't want to spend that much on something I didn't know was going to work right off just because, you know, these just because these aluminum sprockets, you know, they la they're they not the sturdiest things ever. Trying to figure out the engine replacement. As you can see, the fitment with the wheel or the tire is, I mean, it's, it's kind of close. But I do have the option to pull the axle a little farther to this side and pull the wheel out some if I need to. But I'm fine with it being this close for right now. Once I get a, a new tire on it where it's got some more tread that might not work and I can work with it then, but I need to grind off a little bit of the frame here so that this bolts for the sprocket won't hit it when it's rotating because I need to move the sprocket a little farther in to line up with the torque converter and I need to add a little bit under here I need to extend the mount for the engine because as you can see it's hanging off okay got the little extension for the engine plate on all right so it's all hooked up it took a little bit more to get the Short converter like I wanted it than I initially thought. I was going to face it forward like I normally do, um, but but that really wouldn't work with what I wanted. It was really close to the tire, which it still is, but it just wouldn't work with it in the forward facing position, and it wouldn't work back up under the engine. So I ended up mounting it this way. It did take a little bit of work to get it to fit here. As you can see, the exhaust was hitting, but I ground out some of the plate here. The exhaust actually doesn't touch it, but I put some heat blanket that I had between the plate and the exhaust just to try to keep some of the heat out of this. I did have to grind down the fins on the head a little bit just to get a little bit of clearance because the torque converter was hitting and as you can see I had to bend the rim of the gas tank so you know had to do a little more than some may like but i like this placement 